Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I will be doing something different entirely. Uh, instead of talking about a specific existing game or game or genre-wide um, concepts, I will be designing a game or, well, I've done most of the design already or I wouldn't have any slides, but uh, I will be going through the reason why uh, the game came out as it did. Um, the inspiration and the separate concepts and what I think it will play like. Um, so this week I've been watching a lot of board game videos on YouTube. Uh, none of these games, obviously. Um, the only one I recognize here is Monopoly that I have in the background at the top here. Um, but yeah, I have been looking at uh, tabletop videos, I think they're called. It's a series with Will Wheaton and um, I actually started thinking about board games because there are a f quite a few uh, video games that are inspired by board games but none of them that really capture the board game feeling um, and I will be getting to what I'm talking about in the next one here. Um, so classic video game design are games like Monopoly or Chess um, basically games where one player, and as usual I'm drawing the wrong layer, one player wins, uh, wins always. Um, obviously uh, chess and Monopoly are also games of uh, complete information. Complete. And they, they tend to have really long um, late games where one player is obviously the winner so the game drags on for much longer than it really has to um, which is not unlike something like a game of Dota or Starcraft or something like that um, because they tend to be games that are um, exclusive like they're very binary um, either you win or you lose you don't get any credit for points and second player gets nothing uh, stuff like that and then there are uh, the other type of board games uh, which I will be using for today's inspiration uh, games like Munchkin which I've played a lot uh, Small World and Ticket to Ride which I've I've only played Ticket to Ride once and Small World not at all but I watched the video on it and it seems like a pretty cool game actually and this is the sort of chaotic games that I really enjoy playing in in real life with other people um, Munchkin especially but I don't think I've played that for like maybe six years or something like that um, so these are games that are they are basically scored um, scored meanwhile you're playing it so you add up points and then at the, as the game ends you basically add more points um, they are um, on an individual level kind of free because you can choose to either play for yourself like helping yourself or you can choose to play against someone for or against um, in Munchkin, for example, I don't know if I... I just got a few random cards off of Google Images, so I don't really know if I have any sort of uh, cards in the background here. Um, but you can play for yourself, you can play against someone, and the vi the winner isn't really obvious until the very end, unless you're super, super good and doing math in your head. Uh, so, uh, unclear winner clear winner until the very end and this tends to make uh, the games more interesting for the entire game um, they also have a set uh, time limit basically like sure they can go on for a really long time like Ticket to Ride I think is the longest game here but yeah I'm not really sure so I'm not gonna say too much about that so when we look at these games, what do we learn? Uh, the next slide here. Okay, I just have the pa patterns again here. So I have the less binary points 
um, a high random factor, cards or rolls. Um, most games either have or most games have one or the other. Some have both. Um, so you either roll uh, in Settlers of Catan, for instance, you roll die. Um, in Munchkin, you draw cards, obviously, both enemy cards as well as power-up cards and equipment. Um, Ticket to Ride, you draw cards for resources. And uh, what was the other one? Small word. Yeah, you roll die there as well. Uh, games like chess don't have any randomization as o at all, obviously, which makes them more skill-based and also less fun for beginning players playing against someone who's much better than them. Uh, while a game like Munchkin um, can really be settled by the cards. So, a high random factor, and which means that they are not as slippery slope. Because even though you might get super good cards at the start, um, a Munchkin might be like this because you can get really good equipment instantly. But then, um, since players can oppose one another directly, um, your cards might not even matter if someone else has something that can destroy for you. Um, which kind of tends to balance out the game because people tend to gang up on the one who's in the lead. Um, yeah, Players can choose to help or hurt. And they are also mostly turn-based for obvious reasons because it tends to become really complicated if everyone um, acts at once. There are games that do this as well, but I won't be talking much about this because the game I have in mind, um, the game I have designed here, is going to be real time anyway. Just because computers obviously handle math super well in real time. So, the game I'm thinking of making, I don't know, probably not, but what I started thinking on was uh, Warcraft 3. Uh, because the heroes and the creep camps as well as some different units. Uh, I'm also quite familiar with the Warcraft 3 editor even though I haven't used it in a really long time. Um, so this is just a screenshot of the Lost Temple map in Warcraft 3 uh, without the mobs I guess. Okay. okay they are there but not really visible. Um, so if you wanted to do this you should probably pick the StarCraft engine instead, because more people are playing it, obviously. Uh, I'm not sure how well the heroes work in StarCraft, uh, but they won't really be necessary for what I have in mind. So, the game I was thinking of making was a sort of area control game. Um, so, whoops, drawing on the wrong layer. So, if you start with having, like, a Okay, it should obviously be squared, but whatever. It could work like this as well. It doesn't really matter as long as uh, all, four all four positions are taken. So let's say each player has a base in the corner, and then in the middle here you have four control points. Um, they should probably not be this close to each other. Whoops. Of course I can't draw like that. Um, yeah, let's say they're out here instead. Um, or you could just add sort of terrain in the middle. Let's say terrain is blue. You're just adding stuff here to make sure that it becomes sort of harder for uh, players to reach the separate points. Because what I have in mind is that um, um, the four points, they give you uh, real points. Um, that's a bad choice of words, but um, let's say we have the four points. You have one, uh, one, two, three, and four. And you have the four players here. So each full minute, the player that has the most units on one of these uh, control points gets one point. Um, that's basically the core mechanic of the entire game. Um, you could do it with like ordinary Warcraft 3 units or Starcraft units as well. Um, okay, I didn't. I thought I had an extra slide for that. Never mind. Um, so the players get units, 
um, from their base in the corner here, they will also get to pick one randomized hero unit. Um, if you watch the video on Small World, they have a really cool uh, race mechanic, basically where you randomize a race and uh, an ability. So the orcs, for instance, take areas at one less cost or something, and then you also have a, a resource where you get plus one gold per swamp, something like that. So what I had in mind was to have a hero unit um, and then one ability. So you could have a healing uh, a healing Arthas or you could have a run speed increase Lich or you could have a damage boost Orc um, just to make sure that the game um, is different every time. So instead of having like fixed heroes in, like in a game of Dota uh, you will have one, uh, a bunch of randomized heroes. Let's say you get 10 um, 10 heroes and you have you get 10 to choose from and you have uh, 20 to start with or something like that. Maybe you only get 8 to choose from and you have 20. So you have 20 in total and you have let's say 15 abilities. These, uh, I'm writing really crappy but whatever. So you from those you will get a bunch of combinations, pick 10 of those and as the game starts uh, play one chooses one of the 10 randomized heroes. Uh, you could even do this with like five. So play one chooses one hero, uh, play two, uh, a new randomized hero is picked from the pool added to the random selection. 10 is probably too much, five would be enough. Um, so player 2 chooses, uh, another one is randomized, and then player 3, and then player 4. Um, this mechanic is uh, is pretty cool just because you will not always pick the same hero. Um, maybe in a weird scenario everyone will want to pick the one the first guy has and no one will want to pick any of the others, but it also forces you to change your game around depending on the um, on the outset of the game. Uh, this is obviously to add the randomization mechanic um, just because I want the game to be closer. Maybe some sort of combination will become uh, more overpowered than another but then you will just have to patch the game. Um, so the next thing is every player spawns units from the base. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know, it's a custom map from Warcraft 3 where you make a lot of units apparently. Um, I don't want this many, but each player has the base in the corner, which they can control either one by one or in groups. And the hero unit can also pick up uh, stacks of units. Um, so if I go back to this one, let's say you have extra uh, extra camps. So up here is a camp, maybe, or over here, or I don't know, wherever. And then you have a bunch of weird terrain you have to run through. Uh, this means that you can increase your number of units by running around with your hero, but you also don't get to include him in the fights. Um, so let's say you're fighting for number one here with your tiny minions, um, and your hero is over here. Obviously he can't help in the fight, so you fight weaker, but instead you have the potential of getting extra units. Um, I also thought of adding another mechanic, uh, which is that the longer uh, someone doesn't pick up a camp, let's say you run here, get it instantly, but over here is another camp um, that someone doesn't get for the first two minutes, um, then this camp will become bigger than the one um, players run to more often, uh, which means that uh, taking the longer run path will give you more units because um, they become more powerful over time. Um, so you have another reason to run away with your hero because eventually the stacks of units will just become so powerful that everyone will want them. Um, so that is about the creeps. Uh, I'm not sure if I wanted, but I thought about having different um, different units. So you could choose to pick either a small unit uh, that is cheap or 
a medium unit that's average and then a really heavy unit um, just because this allows you to choose let's say you choose the the biggest unit here that means you will have fewer units on the control point which means that someone could snipe them um, because you only have to be on the um, the control point the second it goes from uh, you know 59 to 0 again uh, to get the score so if you have a really powerful unit and then someone snipes it with three weaker units you will obviously have lost the point uh, you might kill the units to make it easier for you to get the next minute but uh, I hope you get the point here like uh, higher value stronger unit more worthwhile but weaker at capturing points um, yeah here's another one I thought of heroes don't get HP back but you can retire and get a new one so the healing uh, healing hero I thought uh, or I talked about before uh, he only heals other units um, it's obviously just a example point or an example ability but yeah this is just to make sure that um, some heroes aren't too overpowered like uh, heroes won't be leveling up in my game they can't pick up any experience either so or any items um, so the hero you get at the start while he might be really powerful uh, another hero can choose to uh, to gank him and make sure that he's out of the game because once your hero dies uh, you will have to pick a new one um, there might be some sort of advantage like um, if you kill a hero you also get a point uh, like the victory points and um, you might get a, some sort of penalty like you can't respawn from your base um, instantly um, so a, a hero kill might be worth let's say five points um, the scoring is obviously going to be based on play testing to make sure that it's fairly balanced uh, but you don't want players to suicide their heroes into another units or another player's army just to get rid of them so you can get a new one. Um, instead, you want to retire them and get a new one. So if you retire, you lose nothing. You get a new hero and you have to choose from the uh, the randomized pool. So you never really know what you're going to get until you actually retire your hero. Um, and you can also pick up random powers. Again, I didn't really think about drawing a good map, which I probably should have done. Uh, but yeah, random power-up spawn, any unit can pick them up. So this can be something like uh, heals your heals a group of units in a certain area. It could be double damage. It could be um, get extra units. It could be teleporting. Um, any sort of really powerful stuff that you want people to fight over basically um, and then once you pick the power-ups they arrive at your base and then you click on your base and then you get to activate the power-up uh, basically something like the really powerful stuff in company of heroes like the artillery strikes and stuff like that um, basically cards or power-ups that you can choose to play either for yourself or against an enemy. Uh, again, to add another element of randomness, as well as giving sort of weaker players a chance to be a major influence on any part of the game, because you never know what the other players get. Um, you can just make some sort of power-up that once you touch it, that player gets a random one and you never cho show it so even though you might be sitting on a big army in the late minutes of the game someone might have collected five power-ups and used them all at once to blast out the end of the game something like that um, uh, yeah one point every minute for having the most units on a point uh, one point whoops again one point for hero kills. Again, um, you will probably need maybe, let's say, 10 points for hero kills because uh, given that the number of 
uh, number of power-ups or the number of control tiles are four. Someone, let's say someone is really good and gets two of them every minute. You have 20 points. One hero death isn't, or one point for hero death is obviously not going to be a big matter. Um, so maybe not 10, maybe five. Uh, but you get the point. The uh, There's also going to be extra points at the end. Let's say for largest army or damage done or most hero kills or stuff like that. Basically things that make sure that someone who has the lead isn't obviously going to win. Someone might be playing really carefully and getting a big army. Um, this is obviously a bad, uh, a bad thing to give points for because someone might just choose to run around with his hero and uh, never get an army basically. Um, but, oh, I forgot this. But yeah, I also meant to add something like the resource system in Warcraft 3, where if you have a bunch of units, you will get less resources. So basically, if you have a big army, you will uh, it will be longer and longer between your own unit spawns, um, which means that someone who is losing really badly is going to get um, a small army back up again fast, so he can get back into the game. Uh, but someone who is doing really well is going to have to pick up the the unit spawns out in the uh, out on the map to increase his army because he's not going to get any more uh, unit spawns at all. Um, basically, another mechanic just to make sure that the game stays even. Um, and obviously, playtesting will have to be done to make sure that uh, the strategy or all strategies become viable, but that's nothing new in game, de game development. Oh, anyway. Sorry, I'm speaking really badly at the moment, but that sometimes happens. Um, so yeah, this is the game I had in mind. Uh, someone who is really good at the StarCraft or WarCraft engine could probably do this, uh, maybe not in a day, but probably in a week, fairly easily. Uh, I'm obviously not one of those people, um, so, yeah, I've considered making it just because I thought it seems like a pretty good, uh, really small game, um, but it might be an interesting, um, an interesting uh, problem to solve, basically. I find that it's always easier to solve uh, or learn something new if you have an obvious project with a defined goal, like this is what I want to do, and I know that this seems reasonable. Um, at least for me, all of the programming seems fairly easy, and even though the the map itself as well as the game balance is the difficult part, but that's what I like about game design anyway. So this is the video of today. I haven't really done a lot of drawing, but I've hopefully gotten my point across, and I would suggest this to anyone who is uh, just looking to have a bit of a new problem, like take something, a new idea, something like board games. I haven't really thought about board games in a long time because I don't tend to play them. Um, but a game idea can come from anywhere. It could be uh, you want to tell a story, it could be you want a certain game mechanic, or you want to, uh, let's say, you want to show off some really cool architecture, uh, which is basically the uh, entire point of uh, the Uncharted games, uh, like really cool architecture or a really uh, really cool situation. Or in this case you could just want to analyze a certain type of games and you want to create something that might play like one of those. And hopefully I will actually get this done. I'm not sure about when or if it even happens, but it seems like a pretty cool project to me. Uh, so thanks for watching and over and out.